Do I have chocolate on my face? Do I have chocolate on my face, people? Mm -hmm. Do I? Mm -hmm. what, what is the thing about people say, um, Oh yeah, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, this is How to Make Dinner and we're making chocolate chip tahini cookies, so stay tuned. Um, okay, hi. So, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I ironed my apron today because uh, I watched a live stream with Binging with Babish and he says that he irons his apron like a minimum once per episode and usually more. So I thought I should follow suit. And I know he wouldn't have flour in bags, he'd have nice containers for everything, but that's okay. Baby steps. Baby steps to becoming like babish. So we're making chocolate chip tahini cookies today. And I'm so excited because I've been playing with these recipes all week long. And I finally settled on my favorite, favorite one. I really think this is the best chocolate tahini cookie. So chocolate chip tahini cookies. They're super easy. They're actually way easier than normal like creaming butter and sugar cookies because you don't really need to cream them because tahini is already soft. Um, so I'm going to start with 180 grams of tahini and I stirred this really well before. And tahini is just sesame seed paste. I made three uh, recipes with it last week. If you caught that, I made two dips and a dressing, which they were all so good. They, they basically provided us with really good snacks all week long, which is awesome. So 180 grams of tahini goes into the bowl and I'm weighing everything, of course, as usual, because I love weighing ingredients. And then we're gonna add 50 grams of olive oil, extra virgin. I love just the little bit of olivey flavor in these. It's pretty mild, but it's just a little something. 50 grams. Now I've never seen chocolate tahini cookies with olive oil before. Most of the recipes I see are just straight tahini. Um, but I, I think it's almost too, you know that roof of the mouth sticky thing? I think that a little bit of olive oil cut in there really helps. So those are in. Now we're gonna go with 200 grams of sugar. So people think using a scale is uh, just for really exacting people. And I'm actually the complete opposite of that. I'm like the laziest cook ever, um, which is why I don't like doing dishes, which is why I like using a scale because it means I can just dump everything into one. That's something that a lot of people that haven't gotten into the using scales, they don't they don't see that part of it. And as soon as they realize that you don't have to wash like 8 million measuring cups, it's a total game changer. So 140 grams of brown sugar is going in. Ooh, that's a little too much. Scale it back. So that's 140 grams, so that's perfect. Shove that away. And then at this point, I'm just gonna give it a good little mix. So this is like the creaming stage, but because it's not butter, which can be kind of hard, even when it's room temperature. Um, you don't even need beaters or uh, a mixer. I just use a spatula or a wooden spoon the whole way through. So I actually do think the wooden spoon is a bit faster because you can really kind of get in there. So I really think that tahini is the recipe, is the, the ingredient of 2019. I mean, it's been, it's been around forever. Everybody knows, knows uh, certain recipes with tahini, but I just feel like 2019 is where we're going to start seeing it in a lot of different things that we haven't, that we haven't seen it in before. There's like cookies, brownies, uh, tons of recipes, like Bon Appetit did a tahini ranch dressing, which I haven't tried yet, but it looks great. I'm super excited about that. Okay, so that's pretty much mixed together. Now we're gonna go in with two eggs. Always cracking eggs on a flat surface, not on the edge of the bowl. I'm gonna go one at a time. Just so that it gets mixed in evenly. Another one in. And 
then vanilla, a good two tablespoons of vanilla. I've never had a complaint that something is too vanilla-y. It's just not really a thing. So this is a bit of a weird one, cider vinegar. Uh, this is my own addition. I've seen some recipes with water, uh, like a tablespoon or two of water. Um, I'm going with vinegar because I feel like it also helps with that kind of roof of the mouth sticky thing. It kind of just cuts through and it adds a really nice balance. So it's a tablespoon, but again, I'm just going to eyeball it. It's about right. So I'd love to know how your guys' cookie extravaganzas went over the holidays. Like, what do I need to make next year? Uh, what are the total winners and what are the total losers of your cookie making? I saw some pretty good ones on Instagram this year. Like the chocolate crinkle ones were a big hit. This is pretty good. I think all, all year round is fair game for cookie making season. So these are great for kids lunches and stuff too. Okay, so sugar's in. Vanilla's in, cider vinegar. So now we're going in with the dry stuff. So 300 grams of flour, which is about two cups. I hope I don't have enough in this bag. Yikes, pretty close. There you go. Oh. <laughs> I got dusted in my face. And then salt, we're gonna do uh, one and a quarter teaspoon. One. And I'm not really sifting. I'm not sifting here. I could sift, but I don't really see the point. Um, so cinnamon, two teaspoons. I just feel like cinnamon is goes so well with the kind of tahini sesame seed kind of vibe. Like a little spice is really good. And then I have a teaspoon of ground cardamom. Cardamom is like, I think it's very um, underutilized. It's so good. It, it kind of makes everything taste, I don't know, like expensive somehow. <laughs> I mean, it is really expensive. It's a very, it's like, I think the order of spice expensiveness is like saffron at the top and then cardamom I think is second or third. So just a little bit. It's it can be a bit much when you overdo it. Okay, so everything's in, I'm just stirring. And then I'm gonna add 340 grams of chocolate chips. So I've really been on the hunt for good chocolate chips. The last batch that I bought, like the generic store brand, were just, I tried eating just a, you know, a bite of them, just a little handful on their own and they were crap like so bad like they don't even taste like chocolate they taste like wax like sugary wax so that was the moment where I thought okay no from now on it's it's good quality chocolate or else so we have a nice little bulk store nearby I'm using pretty much all of these um, and the bulk store is awesome it has a real range of really good to oh that's just a perfect snack for me later um it ranges from really good quality to kind of like the crappy quality. So I really think that chocolate chips are a good place to splash out. You might spend an extra $2, but big whoop. Get rid of this guy. So it's a bit... It's a bit of a stiff dough. I'm actually just gonna switch to my nice clean hands here to bring it all together. And the oven is preheating at 375, but that's because this is a bit of a cool oven. You could maybe, if your oven's a, oops, <laughs> if your oven's a bit hotter, uh, you could do 350. So I've got a little sheet and I've got this scoop. This is a, I forget the number, 24. So I think it's like one and a, one and a half ounce or one and three quarter ounce, the scoop. And these, if you don't have a scoop like this, you can normally find them. The best place to find them is at a restaurant supply store. 
for some reason they never really made it big in like the normal kind of kitchen supply stores but they're so great for cookies muffins anytime you need something to be quickly scooped and all the same size so this is going to take me a couple batches because this is a very small tray the oven i'm working with is quite small so i can't really fit any more in and we're gonna do like oh that one's like all chocolate chip i might redo that one this is a generous amount of chocolate chips in this recipe. You could probably hold back a few if you wanted, but I don't know. I'd have, I've also never <laughs> had anyone complain about there being too many chocolate chips in a cookie. I don't know about you. As long as it doesn't fall apart because it's got more chocolate chip than actual dough. There we go. So one last thing before they go in is I want to do a little sesame seed flourish, if you will. So I've got some toasted sesame seeds here. I, I don't know, it's something about these ones that are pre-toasted that you buy from like the Chinatown stores. They're, they pop more than the raw ones. And then you can do whatever you want. You can just do a little sprinkle. You can just, you know, dab them in. I kind of like to dab them on one side because it looks cool. Kind of like when you scoop it, you naturally get this kind of smooth side. And I like to just roll that around in. And I think it looks really slick. So we'll just keep doing those. And then I'm gonna flatten them out a little bit just to help them out in the oven. Dip my hand in sesame seeds to uh, make it stick less. That didn't work. <laughs> Don't do that. You can dip your hand in water if it's really sticky. All right. So that's the first tiny little, really small batch. And they're going in. So they're going to take 11 minutes. And we'll see you then. <laughs> So here we are 11 minutes later, we've got some really nice chocolate chip tahini cookies. I've got the rest of them cooling behind me on a paper bag the way my mom used to. And uh, I really hope you give these a try. Let me know how they turn out in the comments below and we'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks. They really are good. <laughs> That's not a joke. They're seriously good. Make chocolate tahini cookies. You'll love them. This is how to make dinner. Join me every Wednesday for easy cooking and good eating. <laughs> not bad. Mmm.